The Small Business Show, episode 346 for Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021. You know, you can tell what kind of day I've had by listening to how loud I make the guitar intro of that theme music, uh-huh. and it's been a crazy day. Welcome to the Small Business Show here at businessshow.co, where we are always a small businessing because we don't know how to do anything else. That's just how it goes. Here in Durham, New Hampshire, having a crazy day, I'm Dave Hamilton. And in Lafayette, California... Also having a crazy day, a little frustrating. This is Shannon Jean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm curious to see how this show goes. Our sponsors for today are SaneBox.com slash small business, where you get 14 days free and a $25 credit of one of my favorite services. And LinkedIn.com slash SBS, where you can post your first job for free. We'll talk about all the details and why you're going to do that shortly here. But uh, but as always, you know, you visiting those links and learning more, that's our job, is to get you, encourage you uh, convince you even to go and visit those links. That's, that's our job is, uh, with sponsorships here. And we really appreciate it when you do go and visit those links, whether you buy or not, that's between you and them. It's whether it's perfect for you or not, but, uh, but our job is to get you to go look at them. So we will talk more about that in a little bit right now. Um, last week was small business week, Shannon, what is small business week and why doesn't it matter? I'm glad you asked that question. <laughs> now we'll preface the conversation today that I'm I'm going through some frustration uh, and some uh, issues with one of my companies that's driving me nuts. So I'm I'm a little on edge about that. So uh, that may may uh, factor into my conversation. But I, I ask that same question, what, and I'm really asking our listeners, what is Small Business Week, and how has it helped or impacted? your business or, or has it, or has it hurt it? You know, I, I, you see, uh, lots of large corporations, American express p- promoting small business week and this kind of thing. And I guess, you know, it's to, it's to get people to go shop and buy more from small businesses, but I'm not really sure. I, I, a lot of it I think is performative. Uh, and what I mean by that is, um, it, almost like a virtue signaling, Hey, we should support these small guys, but, uh, you know, we're going to benefit by saying we're promoting these small guys, right? And and maybe I'm totally wrong. And I would love to hear uh, if I am wrong. Feedback at businessshow.co. Tell me how important Small Business Week has been to your small business. Yeah, the White House proclamation, I mean, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it says yeah. our nation's small businesses define our communities, drive innovation, and create the products and services that enrich our lives and solve global problems Agreed. to build a better and more sustainable world. <laughs> right, like you're preaching Agreed. to the choir, 100%. which is yep. a lot of what comes out of any politician, regardless of you know where they fall in land, right? They, they preach to a choir, right? That's how it works. So uh, this one's preaching to the correct choir well done uh by harnessing the power of our small business economy and equipping our entrepreneurs with the tools and resources they need to innovate adapt and grow our economy will continue to build back better than ever before america's small businesses are up to the task i mean i i agree with all of that that's that's beautiful i still don't know what small business week does for me or for you or anybody that that buys things i don't know it, it's it's i mean are we what are we like? I what, what is I don't know. It? I don't get it. Uh, it. It's a, it's a, it's a, just a really good question. And as we started talking about it, this, you know, uh, for the show, it just hit me as I just don't see. Yeah, I'm. I must be missing something, but I don't know. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't I know. Just don't know. Yeah, I've never. I've heard about it, and I've. I've never. As a small business owner, I've never experienced, as always, it feels like it's up to me to make it happen. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point. So maybe there are uh, a number of uh, opportunities to promote your business in Small Business Week, and and I'm just not aware of how to tap into those kinds of things. Right, but, but I mean, if we're going to bother to spend a week talking about small businesses, wouldn't that be a good time for someone else to make it happen for us? And I realize as an entrepreneur, 
I <laughs> I understand. I have, in fact, not just do I understand, I have embraced the fact that no one's going to do yeah. anything for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm going to do it all, you know, or at least catalyze it for myself and and as companies, you know, ourselves. That's that's what that's what. That that's where you figure that out pretty early on when when you're a yes. small business owner, an entrepreneur, yes, solopreneur, yeah. whatever, uh, even a large business owner. You you know it's all the same. I, it, it, but there's a lot of people out there in the world that expect you know well I'll just wait until it happens for me, and and that always that line of thinking. Good luck. It, it well I mean it works if you wait long enough sometimes right. Uh, but it it's not how we're wired and that's okay that there's different people people wired sure. differently. But maybe our problem is that when somebody says, hey, it's small business week, that part of us that, that lies dormant, that, that, you know, we've we've repressed that says, ah, oh, somebody's going to do something for me. Maybe this is why we're snarky about it, because it sounds like the kind of thing that it's going to happen to us or for us as opposed to by us. Right. And I would also argue that, uh, at least in my experience, most small business owners uh, cringe when the government wants anything to do with them. Oh yeah. yeah uh, now I so, will say that the, you know, the payroll protection. Yeah. Uh, oh, fantastic. That, fantastic. That's the first and perhaps last time that yes. I will see the government do anything that materially and directly impacts me as a small business owner. And it was yeah. fantastic. Terrific. And I, yes. I, you know, it's one of those things where it's not my rules, right? They had the rules. And if you fit into the right categories, by golly, take advantage of it whether you need to or not. Um, and yes. uh, and we just got another one of our approvals for you know nice. I got a letter. Yeah, your loan was paid off. It was like great, awesome, that's Sweet. awesome. Thanks, that's yeah, great, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's fantastic. So so yeah. So feedback at businessshow.co. Let us know your thoughts on Small Business Week. Uh, yeah. I, but today we're going to talk about we, we you know I was going to call them top ten, but there's so many more. We're going to limit it to about ten each today. Sure. But uh, these are what I would consider critical business personality traits for small, for small business owners. These are uh, part of who you are, uh, things you need to embrace or at least be aware of yeah. um, to be successful as a small business owner. I like it, man. I've got, it was really hard to limit my, when you said, oh, oh we should do top 10. I'm like, oh, I got to come up with 10. And then within about 45 seconds, I had uh, 25. <laughs> yeah. And I'm still trying to figure out which ones I'm going to talk about here in the show. And we will do that. We'll each kind of go through them back and forth. We'll discuss, try and limit each one to about 30 seconds. Otherwise, this whole thing will take forever uh, as we do that. But we'll see how we do. Uh, maybe we'll get through 10 each. Maybe we won't. The next thing that I want to do is talk about our two sponsors. Our first sponsor is SaneBox at SaneBox, S-A-N-E-B-O-X dot com slash small business. That's where you're going to go to get a 14 day free trial and a $25 credit of one of my favorite and most relied upon services. Inbox zero is a thing of the past. We know that, right? If you think that you're going to manage your inbox by hand, it's it's it that's unrealistic it's just not how it is we're also inundated with email that it's not about responding to everything it's about responding only to the important things focusing spotlighting the messages that truly matter and that's where SaneBox comes in think of it as like an emt for your email SaneBox's artificial intelligence monitors your inbox and then automatically all that knucklehead email is moved to a folder that they call sane later all that's left is the important stuff and your smiles. And if you understand how email folders work, which we all do, then you already know how SaneBox works. You find an email in the Sane Later folder that you want in your inbox, move it. That's all you got to do. It, SaneBox will notice that you moved it. And then the next time an email from that same sender comes in or matches that same pattern, it'll keep it in your inbox. It won't move it to Sane Later. Sane Later. Similarly, if something shows up in your inbox that you want insane later the next time, guess what? Just move it. There's nothing to learn, nothing to install. SaneBox works directly with every single email server or service that's ever been created. And again, if you go to SaneBox.com slash small business, you get 14 days for free and a $25 credit when you want to start your account. Our thanks to SaneBox not just for sponsoring this episode, but for doing what they do. It's super important. I couldn't live without it. So thanks to SaneBox. 
Our next sponsor is LinkedIn Jobs. We're at linkedin.com slash SBS. You get to per- post your first job for free. Because as we know, today, so many of us small business owners are more inundated, more productive than ever. And all that time spent searching for and interviewing candidates can take away from all the time that we have left to manage and grow our businesses. And that's why LinkedIn jobs has made it easier to get to the candidates worth interviewing faster. And it's free. That's right. You can create a free job post in minutes on LinkedIn jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 770 million people. It's what we used earlier this year to find Sadie. I reached out to my personal network because I think, oh, you know, I'm I'm Dave, the podcaster. I know lots of people. I'll be able to bring somebody in. I mean, I brought in a couple of candidates and I was like, that's yeah, not really enough. And then I posted, uh, you know, at LinkedIn.com slash SBS. I used uh, LinkedIn jobs to do this. Man, we got like 75 candidates, all of whom were qualified. And then we use their tools. You know, they they have these uh, screening questions that you can ask and then different tools to sort of narrow people down. We narrowed it down to about, I don't know, 20 or 25. We interviewed them and using still using the LinkedIn tools to sort of mark things after the interviews. And then at the end, we knew who the top five were or whatever. And then we hired one. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates worth interviewing faster. And did you know that every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash SBS. That's LinkedIn.com slash SBS to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And our thanks to LinkedIn jobs for sponsoring this episode. All right, Shannon, what's your first of the top 10 critical business personality traits. The first one that comes to mind, and they're not really in, in any order. Yeah, same. They, yeah. they all have uh, varied levels of importance at different times of your the cycle Fair. of your small business career, right? Yeah. But the one that really sticks with me uh, that you need a lot is resilience. <laughs> and yeah. you really need to be able to power through what are going to be some very tough uh, situations in all manner that you can imagine. Everything from, you know, dealing with uh, landlords, uh, real estate agents, attorneys, employees. I mean, there's going to be some great, great times as business owners and some of the best times of your life. But like my wife always uh, tells people, you know, the highs are high, but the lows are low. Super low. Yeah. Super low. And if you don't have or understand the concept, now, now I want to back up a little bit. Everything <laughs> I'm going to talk about, these traits can be learned. It, it, yes. It's not, it's not that you, oh, I don't have these magic uh, secret sauce, so I can't start a business. No, no, no. no. You, you, can, you can have zero resilience because you're just not prepared for it, and you will build resilience over time, and hopefully the situations that you work through will be a a little bit more minor when you first start little things, little things. And then there will be some big things that you have to get through. Um, and, and understanding resilience and, and, uh, having that in your toolbox is uh, really very, very important. I agree. I agree. Yeah, no, that's a good point. These things can be learned. I, I built my list thinking about not only the skills that I think are valuable, as a, let's say a solo preneur or, you know, a, a solo manager of a business, solo owner of a business, but also the things that I would look for in a potential partner uh, well, for I like a business. That. Yeah. And yeah, I, and they really ca- all, all can be the same thing. And, and that was a way that I narrowed it down. So the next one I'm going to put on the list is attention to detail. There are Ooh. lots of things that are going to happen wow. in your business. And if you are not aware of all, you need to be able to see all the details. Now, you also need to not get distracted by the wrong details. That's a different skill. But if you yeah. are if you are not someone who has trained yourself, and this is also a trainable skill, but uh, it, you need to be and partner with people who have tr- already learned yeah, how great. to pay attention to all the details that go by. And then again, the next level of that skill is filtering for the the details that matter as opposed to the ones that you can kind of let slide. But you really got to be able to pay attention. And uh, and well, and so, I, I love that. Yeah. 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 And and I like how, y- you know, you bring in if you don't have this skill, 
you, you need to be looking for someone that can help offset that weakness, right? And, yeah, but I uh, think you need to yeah. develop it anyway. Like, to me, these are skills that everyone involved in the management God, needs I'm to terrible. have. I'm terrible. I have to tell you, I'm terrible at attention to detail. You're not, though. <laughs> you, I, I mean, well, I can tell you, you notice things I don't. So that's why yeah. I think you're good at it, right? Like, maybe it maybe a different... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Different areas, I, yeah. I can see that, but uh, yeah, yeah that, that, that that's that's a good one. Uh, my um, the next one on my list is um, it's integrity, and I would argue that this can be learned as well, because oh, sure. yeah, and I can remember you know being a young business owner and just getting out, and I'm a deal guy, you know, a hustler, uh, if you will, and sometimes that can have a bad connotation, but. You know, I was always looking for the quick way to make a buck when I first started. But as I uh, grew into it, and especially once I had other people relying on me and hiring and, and built a larger company, you know, it became really important to look at and to analyze how you were making money and how you were treating people and how you were treating your customers, partners, employees, and be sure that, uh, you were doing it with integrity yeah. so that you could sleep at night and that you were, you know, it doesn't have to be, uh, I think I'm using this term, right? A zero sum game where no. if you win, if you win, someone else loses. It, it, it just doesn't have to be, you should be able to build a culture of your business around the fact that yes, I may have to compromise and ask other people to compromise, but, but we're going to make uh, this together so we can all benefit. And if you can do that, uh, success is going to find you much sooner than if uh, you don't have that integrity. And if yeah. your employees look at you and questioning what you do, uh, your partners don't trust you, that kind of thing. So integrity really needs to be high up on that list. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I've always said that that's the thing that allows me to continue to stay in business is people trust me. And I, I like integrity is the key to that. I mean, sometimes you can com convince people to trust you when they shouldn't like, but yeah. that's a short lived game, man. <laughs> like it really they, is. they will figure yeah. it out. The, the, yeah. the next one on my list is politeness. Oh, that's good. Oh, God. <sighs> it drives me. And, and this is, you know, it goes back to my, my litmus test of, of vetting pretty much any <laughs> human. <laughs> I was it, just going to mention this because uh, I love this example. I think it's what you're going to say. Yeah, yeah. It, it really is the way to vet humans, not just employees or business partners, but people that I just want to be associated with or not associated with. And it's, will they say please and thank you to wait staff at yeah, a restaurant? Brilliant. But really, like, it costs you. I, I used to say it costs nothing to say please and thank you and I'm sorry. In in the scenarios where you've done something wrong, just say I'm sorry, you know, and, and, then, and then show that you mean it with all of those things, right? But I used to say it costs you nothing. I have encountered enough people that are resistant to say those words that now I know that it does cost nothing some people something and that is their perception of their own ego uh it, it, that's my that's my perception of of what's going on in these scenarios because i i was out to eat with a, a a a friend that i've known for decades and quite frankly is someone that i probably if i encountered today would not spend a lot of time with but it's somebody i've known you know for a very long time and uh and they didn't say please after they ordered their food and again i've known this person a very long time I'm like, hey, you got to say please when you do that. Why? They're just doing their job was the question. And I was like, yeah, but it, but it's a, another human. Like, <laughs> it just didn't make sense to me. But it was, oh, it was, well, they, they're supposed to do that for me. So there's no reason I should, I should go out of my way to be polite about it was the thought process. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Was my reaction. Like, wow. <laughs> yeah. It's, I, it's very telling. I don't It's very telling. I don't even know like how to unravel that like that. But yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. So politeness, please. Thank you. Yeah. Yep. I like that. And I'm going to skip ahead on my list because you mentioned ego. Yeah. And one of the things I think that can really help you as a small business owner is knowing how and maybe more importantly, when to dial your ego up and down. And the, I think that's a good example is that, you you know, 
I'm always loud and I'm talking and I'm creating this story. And, and I think half the time I'm convincing myself at of the course. same time, I'm trying to convince, you know, my customers, my employees, how this kind of thing. But you also need to be able to dial it way down when you need to, if you made a mistake, you know, I'm sorry, this kind of thing. And there are folks, you know, maybe a, a salesperson personality that maybe, you know, never dials it down. And I think that that's a tough one. You know, maybe, maybe you can be a salesperson all the time, but if you're always selling and never connecting and, you know, dial, dialing your ego, l learning how to control that is very important. In the music business, we call that LSD, lead singer disease. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I mean, the lead yep. singer of a band, when they are on stage being a lead singer, needs to be on. And yes. in that, the egotistical, confident belief, yep. you know, sometimes cool. false Greatest of all time right? belief, yeah. right? You, oh yeah. You know, yeah. and, um, I, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of, of not just getting to know, but even playing on stage with a guy named Gary Sharon, who's the lead singer of a band called extreme. And he was, uh, one of the, the lead singers of Van Halen for a short period That's of time. Right. Yep. Right. And, uh, he is the most humble guy off stage, which is where I met him. You know, he would come to some gigs of mine. It was a long story. But anyway, uh, and really like nice, soft spoken, very kind, super polite, you know, all of that stuff. And then the moment he stepped on stage with me for the first time, it was like, oh my goodness. Now he's a different person. Like he in in the right way. I mean, it was like hold yeah. on to the reins because th this horse is about to go, you know, and it was awesome. But it was, and then when he gets off stage, he's like, oh yeah, it was so much fun. Thanks for having me come up. Thanks for letting me sit in. It's like, right. you're Gary yeah. Sharon. Like, <laughs> but you know that, but he, he's able to turn it off. Some people are not. And, yeah. and that, yeah, you use your ego as a tool. That's right. Yeah. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think you, you know, kind of following into that, you need to be able to be decisive even when you don't have all the information you need to make a decision. And, and that's yeah. not an easy one. That's definitely one that most of us learn. I don't know anybody that just naturally <laughs> can, well, yeah, and, and, can do and that's that. Leaders, yeah. That's leadership, right? That's um, right. Be, yep. You know, being able to, okay, we're going to do it. Yeah. We don't know how it's going to turn out. We don't have all the data, all the data we would like to have, uh, but waiting for all the information just can paralyze you. Paralyze. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that, that that's, would have been the next good. one on my list. Yeah. That's what's great. your, what's yours? Mine, uh, keeping on this ego thing and being able to be this, uh, lead singer kind of thing. I think you need to become comfortable with embellishment and hyperbole uh, when it, 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 again, it's all about timing. But, uh, if you look at some of the, you know, greatest business people around, you know, the, the Steve jobs, reality distortion field, you know, this kind of thing. Um, there is a time and place where you need to uh, pump up your product or service, your people, talk about how you're going to change the world with your widget, um, perhaps use hyperbole, hyperbole when you're explaining some of the traits. And um, sometimes if, if you take it too far, you know, you, you're distorting the truth and you're lying, that kind of thing. But embellishment and... Uh, uh, hyperbole, it, they definitely have their place. And yeah. I, I, I think we could all find examples of it. And it does uh, become part of the story or moving your story forward and getting people on board and being a leader. Um, you know, I, our internal tagline that we had, you know, it went with Tech Restore was, you know, we're, we're changing the world one repair at a time. Right. And sometimes people would call me out and I go, no, let me give you an example. And you could work it up like, okay, well, this kid who couldn't afford a new computer and he got to do this and this and this and this, you know, and on and on and on and up and up how it goes. And it all started with the, what is that? For want of the shoe, the writer was tossed, yeah, you know, that yeah, kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, so it, it embracing that and knowing it's okay to do it and when to do it uh, can really serve you well. I, I agree. Yeah. I, I had persuasiveness on my list. Um, and that certainly like, that's exactly yeah, that's what good. you're saying. I, yeah. I had it next to ability to network 
Uh, yeah, that's good. Right. Which is a different a different facet of that same thing. But but the ability to network is also the ability to listen to other people, truly listen to other people. You know, you're going to find as a as a business owner, you're going to other people are the ones that are going to pay you money. Right. Like that's the, yeah. You, yeah. I don't know how to be in business without customers. Right. And so you need to be able to communicate with your customers. You need to be able to be at, at a, apparently at ease at like a cocktail party, whether you're at ease at a cocktail party or not is sort of irrelevant. That's your problem or my problem uh, if I'm at a cocktail party. But you need to be able to operate in those environments as though you are comfortable and and the best way to do that is by listening to other people and hearing yeah. their stories, because most of us really just like to talk about ourselves. And, that's right. And, and you need to it, curb that desire in yourself sometimes. Hard. And <laughs> yeah, and, and trying to, when you're networking, uh, changing your thinking up to how can I add value to this contact, this person, yes. especially before you ever need anything from them, right? Mm -hmm. Because there will be some time you would maybe perhaps need something. Um, And yeah, that that is a a great, uh, a a really important trait. What's your next Um, one? My next one is, keeping on this theme of uh, a couple last things, we're talking about confidence. Yeah. Having confidence, again, you can learn this, but even to the point where sometimes you have unrealistic confidence in yourself that can really help, even if it's just inside your head that you're telling yourself this and you're you're training your inner judge um, to help you. You're programming, you know, we're just moist robots and being confident that, you know, things are going to work out, confident that we're going to solve this problem, confident that people uh, are are going to find value in what you're offering them, that your employees, I mean, all the, the, this whole realm around you, confidence helps to build credibility and trust with the people around you. If you're not confident in what you're selling in yourself, first and foremost, it's going to be a much tougher yeah. thing to get you to be successful, I think. So I, I, I would add the flip side of that, which is to be open-minded and adaptable. There are times when you have to be confident, it, sometimes blindly so, but, sure. but, you know, the ability to adapt and, yeah, and not just point. believe your own BS. Yeah. Oh, that's <laughs> absolutely right. You know, to actually, yeah. again, it probably goes back to listening, right? What is this person saying? And are they right? You know, I've, I've, Scott Adams, I think is the one that, that often says perhaps in different contexts, but it, I think it applies here. What if everything you think, you know, is wrong? Yeah. Whew. Right. I mean, oh, like, because, <laughs> because you would think the same way, right? If you're wrong, you'd just be confident, except you're wrong. And, and so being open-minded and adaptable, you don't want to be second guessing yourself all the time. That's not a good thing if you're trying to push a company forward, but you need to be able to second guess yourself at times and, and have other people second guess you and actually listen to them. So. That's, yeah, that would have been that's my next really one. Good. Yeah, or that I is like my next it. one. Yeah. yeah, and mine, again, we'll just kind of, I'm jumping around here. Same. Keep things in order, but uh, empathy is really important. Uh, an important trait to understand and to be able to um, understand what your employees are going through and how the actions you take with your business are impacting their life. Um, understanding what suppliers are going through when they're having problems and trying to uh, work things out with them that so that it's a win-win for both of you. Uh, I, I've always used the example of when a, a supplier or a vendor makes a mistake, it is an excellent opportunity to become closer to them oh, and yeah. to, to gain a, 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 f- a, a, f- a le- gain leverage or a foot up, if you will, over other people they're doing business with by helping them solve a problem if they made a big mistake and, uh, uh, you know, it, it, I don't want to say it puts them in your debt, but no. there is a, a thing in there about, oh, we, you know what, we screwed up with these guys and they really did handle it well and they understood the problem. Uh, I want to make sure we take care of them next time. I so, had, I had a, a perfect, like short timeline example of this. There was somebody, one of the ad agencies we work with, one of the reps there sent something out and just screwed the whole thing up. Uh, and, and came, you know, came back an hour later 
and was like, I'm really sorry. I screwed this up. You know, please, you know, accept my apologies and, and you know, let's do it this way. And I replied to them and said, oh, it, no big deal. We all screw things up all the time. Everything's great. You know, I've I've redone what I needed to do for you here. Uh, don't even think about it again. Right. And uh, and then three days later, I screwed something up, sending it to that same person. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and I just replied and I said, well, it looks like it's going around, you know. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. and they were very accommodating. It was like, oh, of course, you know, but but it we that person and I now have a much deeper relationship because we built trust with each other over one and now both of us making mistakes. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. and that building, that's a, I've always said like uh, a mistake or even a conflict, if it winds up being resolved is a fast track to building trust. It's much oh, you, faster than yeah. just a, you know, Oh, things are just going along smoothly. Everything's fine. You know, that can take a year or more to develop trust where, is with this one person, it took three days and it was like, yeah. boom, now you, I am the first person that you will call if you need to like feel something out because, you know, I'm going to I'm going to take it for the way you're bringing it to me. I'm not going to hold it against you. And that's yeah, yeah that's good. That's great. Yeah, it is. And, uh, you know, even with your customers, if you can solve a problem, if you made a mistake. Yeah. And they come to you and you embrace our mantra of the, you know, two tokens uh, method of customer service, that customer will be loyal to you for life. Absolutely. And they will tell everybody about it. And so uh, that, that, that. So you're very, saying very with, with this empathy thing, by putting that on the list, my, the class that I've been developing, how to be a better sociopath, that's not going to sell too well or. or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's great. I, yeah. I am going to get away from soft skills, uh, at good. least for one moment here. Money management is oh, something yeah, that good. needs to be on the list. And this is very much a, both you and all of your business partners need to a skill you need to possess. It is very clearly one of these skills that can be learned. I don't know anyone that's born with the ability uh, and the knowledge to manage money in any effective way. Uh, our schools definitely don't teach it to us. They should, nope. uh, you know, and I say, I should say our schools, my daughter uh, actually wound up taking a class in college where they taught her, the you know some great money management skills but like it's it it should come up in middle school let alone high school i don't know anyway it is something that that you and your business partners need to have and if you are you know vetting out a potential business partner and they don't have their financial life in in under control run screaming because it yeah. will come back to haunt you. It doesn't mean that if, you know, your potential business partner says, Oh, I, you know, I'm, I'm recovering from a bankruptcy. That's not necessarily a bad thing. That can actually be a good thing because a bankruptcy is a very smart financial tool to use in certain scenarios. And it can also be one of those that really teaches you a lesson too. Yeah, <laughs> so, sure. you, you know, don't it, like look at the whole picture, but really get a feel for how they are managing their life now. And, uh, and, uh, and That's great. Yep. Yep. So good. So yeah. I, ha I have maybe one or two more. I don't want to run too long here Same. today because yep. I know everybody's busy, but, uh, productive. One Shannon. Of the, Everyone yeah, is productive. productive. Not busy. Boy, it's a killer. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, one of the most important skill sets that has really served me well during time, good times and bad times yep. is being able to compartmentalize oh. my entire life and being able to set aside, uh, business problems when I was running on the soccer field, refing my kids, or when I had to go to the bank and maybe use a little embellishment and hyperbole to tell them how things were going because they were going to, you know, give me a new line of credit. Um, compartmentalization is your friend because if you just dump it all in the big bucket of your brain and you're thinking about this stuff all the time, I just don't know how you do it. I don't know how you sleep. Brilliant. I don't know how you, you know, and so learn and again, you can learn how to do this. Le it's like, it's that, you know, leaving the office at the office when you go home and don't take those yeah. problems home when you're having dinner. And uh, when you come in and you got a problem with one aspect of your business, not taking it out on everybody else the whole day and, and just compartmentalizing and being able to leave that behind. 
I failed at that over the weekend, by the way. That's why I'm laughing. But um, yeah, yeah, it happens. Yeah, no, it's it fine. Happens. Oh, I'm, I'm going through it right now. I'm trying not to let, I'm, I'm battling through a, a significant problem with one of my businesses and I'm yeah. trying not to let it leak into my entire, uh, you know, yeah. monitor, everything. And so yeah. you, you just have to kind of put it in perspective and continually put it away in that little uh, section in your brain. That no, but there's, there's, the, there's the sort of, uh, what I will call the the uh, shotgun approach to compartmentalization, right? Which is what you're talking about. Like, learn how to leave it at the office. And this is step one, right? Learn how yeah. to leave it at the office. Learn how, you know, or if you've got something going on at home, learn how to leave that at home when you're focusing on the office. Like, that. that's step one. But then there's the more surgical strike compartmentalization where you've got some very nuanced thing going on that you could let distract you when you're focusing. And it's like, nope, I, I it, you know, I have this skill. I can put that over there. It will be there when I come back to it. It's definitely not going away. And you can take comfort in the fact that whatever that problem is, ain't going away. Great. It'll be there in two hours. But right now I am going to be my best self on this thing. And that, that yes. it's a valuable skill, it, it, not oh. only to keep you sane, but to keep you successful. Yeah. 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 The last thing I'll mention, Oh, it's your turn, uh, Dave. You yeah, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I bullheaded persistence is yeah. I, I, you know, I, I know we've sort of danced around it, but I, if I ever, if there's one thing that I credit with my ability to continue to produce, I don't want to say to succeed or to fail, but it's just to stay produce. at it to produce uh -huh. is because we're about being productive. Right. So to produce, that's how it works. Uh, if I produce enough, then I am successful. I don't have to worry about that. It's all about, yeah. can I produce? is bullheaded persistence. And I, I credit this, you know, probably once a day, but certainly many times a week. I, if it weren't for bullheaded persistence, I, I joke about this, but it's probably not that much of a joke. I, you know, I'd probably be living in a cardboard box. It, it <laughs> there are always things that can be in the way. There are always things that I can get myself in the way. Uh, probably the, that's the most common thing that gets in the way is me, but, being able to push through no matter what and just say, okay, I'm going to do this. We're going to figure it out. Uh, we're going to get to the other side of this and believing that you're going to get to the other side of this, even though you don't know what the other side looks like. Sometimes, you know, you tell yourself what it's going to look like so that you can get there, but yeah. it's not always the same and that's okay. Yeah. Bullheaded persistence. That's, that's I love it. sort of my number one. <laughs> it opens up the, uh, that creativity and productivity funnel that we talked well, about. It on forces last, you to be resourceful. Show. Right? Yeah, exactly. is, is what it is. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. So uh, I'll end on this one as I think it's so important and it, it, it might be the most important thing that I've mentioned today is to have a sense of humor <sighs> about yourself, your business, your life, everything, your customers, try to connect using humor, try to market using humor, tell your story if you can with humor. Yeah, man. Uh, it just will I mean, if you can laugh at yourself and how you screwed up here or whatever, and it, it allows you to connect with other human beings on an entirely different level than you will at your business uh, and your, whether it's your employees or whoever, you know, if you don't have one work on a sense of humor yeah. or figure out a few ways to, to, you know, uh, something, but that it, it'll, it'll save you over and over and over again. I love it. That's a great yeah. one. What a great way to end. Bullheaded yeah. persistence and a sense of humor about and the whole sense thing. Sense of humor. Yeah. Absolutely. Because you're you going to screw laugh. up. I mean, and, and yeah. things are just not going to go your way sometimes. No, no. most of the time. <laughs> In fact, almost all the time. You have to leverage yeah. those moments where they do. And that's another skill is just, you know, that, that uh, well, it's the perseverance, which is the Adapting. resilience. Yeah, yeah, that you started with. It's just deal with, you know, suffer the blows, suffer the blows, and then be ready to jump. When opportunity knocks and that, you know, when people say, oh, you must be so lucky. I mean, I guess so. I, I, I know so. Fortunate. Right? Fortunate. 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 Yeah. But but luck, you know, what's the definition of luck, right? Preparation meets opportunity. And, and yeah, some of that exactly. preparation is not being so down that you miss seeing the opportunity right there. So, yeah, yeah. for sure. I like sure. it. I like it. Yeah, I do too. Great show. I love talking about this stuff. Same. Uh, Good if, topic, if, man. We, we certainly didn't give the entire list that we both have, but <laughs> no way. Share your thoughts, feedback at businessshow.co, uh, or come to 
any of our socials, Facebook, you know, uh, LinkedIn, just come search for The Small Business Show. You'll find us, and uh, we would love to chat with you. We would love to hear from you. Absolutely. That's what we got. Sanebox.com slash small business. LinkedIn.com slash SBS. Keep living that charmed life. We'll see you next week. <laughs>